Let's take a look at history recovery with Pi Event Frames Generator, or EFGen 4.1 and later. As a note, history recovery has changed substantially with version 4.1 and later. Here we have Pi Event Frames Interface Manager. History recovery for 4.1 and later is going to happen on a config node by config node basis. And this can be considerably different whether you're using non-Pybogen or Pybogen compatibility mode. So for non-Pybogen compatibility mode, each config node is typically or would be at the procedure level. For Pybogen compatibility mode, it would be typically at the unit procedure level. See the notes below for more examples for non-Pybogen compatibility mode, in addition to details on history recovery for Pybogen compatibility mode. In this video, we're going to first go through a discussion of how this history recovery happens and then go through a few examples. So for our discussion, if the event frame is shown in either green or blue at the procedure or unit procedure level, that means the event frame exists in AF. If it's shown in the lighter color as shown on the right here, that means the event frame does not exist in AF, but there is underlying trigger data that does correspond to that event frame. So for non-Pybogen compatibility mode, the following logic would be implemented on a config node by config node basis. So for your interface instance, the following logic could happen multiple times for the different config nodes. So the first thing the interface does is it searches for an existing event frame between RST and RET. And in this case, RET is star. So it's basically now. In this case, we have one event frame. It's line one, number 15. The interface changes the RST for this configuration node by moving RST forward in time to the start time of the most recent event frame. So if there's multiple event frames found between RST and star, it would be the start time of the latest, the one with the most recent start time. It then completes history recovery for that event frame, so it would recover any unit procedure or sub-batches within the line 115 event frame, and then continue on recovering line 16, line 17. And since RET is not specified in this case, the interface would finish recovery and continue running in real-time mode. If no event frame is found between RST and RET, the interface then checks for any event frames between RST and RST minus ABTO or abandoned batch timeout, which would be 100 days by default. If an event frame is found, RST is moved back in time to the start time of the most recent or the latest event frame prior to RST. In this case, it would be line 112. It then recovers any unit procedures or sub batches within line 112, in addition to all event frames moving forward up until RET, or in this case, star. If an existing event frame is not found between RST and RET, and there's no event frame between RST and RST minus ABTO, the interface looks for the first start trigger after RST and then completes recovery up until the end time. So in this case, line 114 through line 117 are recovered. And since no end time was specified, the interface would finish recovery and continue running in real time mode. A few special notes about RET. If RET is specified during an event frame for this configuration node, the event frame will remain open. And since RET was specified after completing recovery, the interface would shut down. To properly close this event frame, RET would need to be specified after the end time of that event frame. If RET is specified during an event frame that already exists and that event frame is closed, no recovery will be done on this configuration node. Now let's complete two examples on an interface node. The first is going to be RST is specified and RET is not specified. There's no existing event frame between RST and RET, but there is an event frame between RST and RST minus ABTO. In the second example, Let's specify RST and RET, and there are no existing event frames in this database. Here we have Pi Event Frames Interface 
manager open with our instance of EFGen. And when I take a look at server information, you can see that we're going to be writing with this interface instance to production example one. So let me go ahead and hop into that AF database. The top, you can see here I have production example one. And these are all the most recent event frames. And they end at, it looks like, around 6 a.m. this morning. I'm going to start a recovery that goes from about 9 a.m. until now. And I'm going to have no end time specified. So that essentially is star, and then the interface would go into real time mode. And since the last event frame in my existing database is 6 a.m., but I'm going to start or uh, turn on recovery start time for 9 a.m., we expect that for this procedure level, it's going to actually fill in the additional information that I did not specify or the additional event frames between 6 and 9. So to do that, let me go into Pi Event Frames Interface Manager under Operational Settings. I'll go to Recovery, uh, Start Time, and specify my start time as 9 a.m. today. Go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click Save. Go to Service Configuration and start my interface instance. Wait just a minute or two. And then if I go back to Pi System Explorer, click on Refresh. And sure enough, you can see there are event frames all recovered. I specified 9 a.m., so that would correspond to any event frames around this time frame. And then these exist uh, event frames prior to 6 a.m. existed. So all of these ones here in the middle were recovered because the interface goes and looks for event frames for RST to RST minus ABTO uh, to find the start time that it really should use to complete recovery. For our second example, we wanted to recover between RST and RET, but there's no existing event frames between those, and there's no event frames between RST and RST minus ABTO. So to do that, I'm going to specify a new database and then complete recovery from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. today. So here I'm back on my interface node. I'm going to go ahead and stop the interface instance that we were running, and I'm going to specify a new empty database. And in this case, it's going to be production example two, which is currently empty. I'm also going to go under operational settings and specify an end time. And the end time is going to be 10 AM. So since there's no event frames between RST and RET, and there's no event frames between RST and RST minus ABTO, I expected the interface to start recovering at 9 AM, continue until 10 AM, and if the end time bisects an event frame, in this case, the event frame would actually remain open and the interface would shut down. I'll go ahead and click Save Settings, go to Service Configuration, and start my interface. If I wait just a couple minutes and then I'll go over to Production Example 2. Let me check for event frames. And sure enough, that's exactly what I see. It starts recovering with the first event frame after 9 a.m. and then continues to recover until 10 a.m. And then since the close trigger of that event frame is after 10 a.m., it remains open. We've now discussed how history recovery works for non-Pybogen compatibility mode for Pi event frames generator versions 4.1 and later. See below for additional examples of non-Pybogen compatibility mode, as well as examples for Pybogen compatibility mode.